so welcome to this first lesson of the new course that is on the industrial building design so in this course we'll be learning about the various types of industrial buildings what are the different parts of the building and later on in the later lessons we'll be designing one industrial shed what are industrial buildings so usually industrial buildings are the low rise steel structures they are housing workshops or industries this is a typical picture of the industrial shed you can see all the components are steel members the columns the beams everything is created with steel and even the different parts of bracings and supports are steel so this is one industrial shed now what are the different classifications of the industrial buildings so any building structure used by industry to store raw materials or for manufacturing products of the industry is known as the industrial building so industrial buildings can either store raw materials or they will have lots of machinery to create some different product products ranging from your smallest equipments mobile phones or computers laptops or even larger machinery such as cars trucks etc so industrial buildings may be categorized as normal type of industrial buildings and special type some normal type of industrial buildings are shed type buildings with simple roof structures on open frames these buildings are used for workshops or warehouses so warehouses is where you store raw materials or your any kind of material and workshop is where the machineries are placed and used these buildings require large and clear areas unobstructed by the columns so to store raw materials or to use machinery you need a larger clear space without any columns whereas in the case of residential buildings this is not the case the large floor area provides sufficient flexibility and facility for later change in the production layout without major building alterations the industrial buildings are constructed with adequate headroom for the use of an overhead traveling crane so even to pick up raw materials equipments or even to use the machinery sometimes these industrial buildings will have large gantry cranes on near the roof for which ample of headroom is required so the headroom in industrial building can vary from 15 meters to 20 meters or even more depending on the size of the machinery to be kept inside on the amount of materials to be kept inside etc special type of industrial buildings are steel mill buildings used for manufacturing of heavy machines or production of power and so and so so these will be special type of buildings because they require different kinds of flooring or area or even the lighting ventilation conditions should be different as they have heavy machinery manufacturing or power is being produced inside let us talk about the structural configuration so typically the base in the industrial buildings have frames spanning the width direction so there are different different bays each bay has begins with one portal frame kind of a arrangement several such frames are arranged at suitable spacing to get the required length so the width will become the width of the frame let us say the width of the frame is 5 meters these frames are placed at 4 meters interval each so if five such frames are placed then you will have 20 meter length and 
5 meter width industrial building depending upon the requirement several bays may be constructed adjoining each other the choice of structural configuration depends upon the span between the rows of the columns the headroom or the clearance required the nature of roofing material and the type of lighting so we'll be talking about the structural configuration in the in this lesson at the end in a better way if span is less than portal frames like steel bends or gable frames can be used if the span is large then building with trusses are used so this here we are talking about the span of the portal frame so this is the steel bent arrangement where you have steel columns and the steel beam supported by these columns this is the gable frame where you have the columns which is supporting these inclined beams connected together as the span increases you will require a truss arrangement on the roof let us now talk about the floors of the industrial buildings so industrial floors shall have sufficient resistance to abrasion impact acid action and temperatures since industrial buildings are used for storage let us say we are storing some hazardous acid chemicals something then the flooring should be such that if there is any leakage then the floor should not be ruined because we need to reuse the floor and keep the maintenance cost minimum so the floor should be tough and should be impact resistant abrasion resistant or temperature resistant high strength or high performance concrete can satisfy most of these requirements economically and is the most common material used so you must have gone to various large stores such as decathlon if you go to the those the the largest post equipment store you will see the floor is made of the concrete or polished concrete floor because when you are using things machines which have large impact then regular tiles which are clay tiles can be broken easily which is why we use the concrete as flooring for industrial buildings foundation for vibrating machinery such as reciprocating and high speed rotating machinery should be placed upon rock or firm ground and it should be separated from the adjoining floor to avoid vibrations so in most of the cases where machinery is used the foundation of this machinery should be isolated from the rest of the structure because these vibrations will cause the flooring to crack or can even hamper the structural integrity of the entire building now let us talk about the roof systems so while planning a roof the structural designer should look for the lightness strength waterproofing insulation fire resistance cost durability and low maintenance charges sheeting pulling and supporting roof stresses supported on column provide common structural roof system for industrial buildings the type of roof covering its insulating wall acoustic property the appearance from in interior the weight and the maintenance are the factors which are given consideration while designing the roof brittle sheeting like asbestos corrugated and cement sheets or even ductile sheeting like the galvanized iron corrugated or profile sheets are used as the roof covering material usually cement sheets asbestos sheets are preferred corrugated sheets are preferred for regular roofing material the deflection limits for purlins and truss depends on the type of the sheeting because these sheets will have some loads so these loads will be transferred to the purlins and ultimately to the truss and which is why it 
this is the most important part of the structural design so we have different types of roofs like pitched roof trusses you can see flat truss hover truss these are inclined members supported at either end with a connecting structural member in between then we have parallel cord trusses where the bottom and the top cord are parallel to each other we have k type flow girder warren lattice girder etc and in the end we have a combination of both which is a trapezoidal form of truss trapezoidal form of truss like this so on looking at the cross section of one the frame we can see we have foundation which supports the column this column is bolted or anchored in the foundation while it is being set these are the eaves or strut or you can say tie this is the rafter we have main rafter or you can say the principal rafter on top of the rafter there are purlins these are angled steel sections which will support the sheeting you can see the sheeting is provided like this they will be bolted or screwed then we have side rails we can have wall because we need to also keep the interior safe from the elements outside so walls are provided with doors windows etc up to a certain height as required this is the apex haunch eaves haunch and the floor level so this is what we'll be designing in the industrial shed design there will be live loads, dead loads, there will be effect of wind which all needs to be considered while doing the structural designing. Now let us talk about lighting. So industrial operations can be carried on most efficiently when adequate illumination is provided. The requirements of good lighting are its intensity and uniformity. So the lighting should be intense enough that the workers can see what they are working on and it should be uniformly spread throughout the interior of the structure. Since natural light is free, it is economical and wise to use the daylight as most satisfactory for illumination in industrial plants. Because providing lots and lots of electrical lighting system will be having expensive cost and to avoid that, it is best to design the structure in such a way that maximum use of the natural light is being done. Side windows are of much value in lighting the interiors of small buildings. But when you talk about larger structures, which have larger spans, then these side windows will not be able to penetrate enough till the middle of the building where we provide monitors we will see what these monitors are so this is monitor which will have side windows and it can illuminate the middle of the building as well so when this pan is larger the windows will not be able to penetrate enough to the middle so for this we provide monitors if the span is smaller the side windows are sufficient Now let us talk about ventilation. Ventilation of the industrial building is very important because ventilation is used for removal of heat, eliminating the dust created inside to circulate the air properly. It can be done by means of natural force forces such as aeration or by mechanical equipment like fans. You can provide fans to remove the heat. You must have seen those globe-like structures on the roof of the building or the industrial sheds which rotate. Now these structures are used to eliminate the heat 
generated inside and the heated air rises above and goes out through these vents. The large height of the roof may be used advantageously by providing low level inlets and high level outlets of the air. Now let us talk about the parts of an industrial shed. So this is a general typical diagram of an industrial shed. The red are the main rafters. The black lines are the expressing. The green the green ones are Berlin's which will have roof sheeting on top of it. The height from floor to the bottom of the roof is the eave height. The blue is the end wall rafter. The last tie or the strut is the eave strut. Then we have the columns, the main columns. These red longitudinally placed members are called GERD. They have advantages in such a way that you can provide wiring, plumbing through these kind of supports as well as they keep the span fixed. Then we can have door jam, window frame. This one distance between two columns is a bay. These are the interior bays and this one is the end wall bay. We can have two end wall bays on either end. Then we have door header in the front. Then overhead door jam, the end wall post and wall bracings. So these are the main parts of the structure. When we are designing such a structure, the most important design is of that of the roof truss where we have to design the purlins, the rafters and then the next important part is the column design. The rest of the material or the doors etc are fairly easy and do not require structural designing aspects. Let us talk about structural framing. So after Deciding the layout, the column rows are located as per the clearance requirement. So the first step is to locate the column. Usually 4 to 8 meter column spacing is provided. Then the locations of opening, lintels, doors and wall columns is fixed. The type and pitch of truss is chosen. The panel lens are worked out and position of pearl lens are marked. Lateral bracings are provided and materials used for floor, roof, walls and partitions are then worked out. So all these are the various steps to go with while you are designing the industrial building.